You are listening to The Exam Room, brought to you by the Physicians Committee. I am the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll, on Twitter, at Chuck Carroll, WLC, with two R's and two L's. Also follow the show at PCRM. And while you're on Facebook, be sure to give us a like. Just search Physicians Committee. Today, all talking about the link between meat and cancer. Sitting across the table from me from the Barnard Medical Center, Dr. Steve Niebuhr. How are you, Steve? Very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I like that. You know, hopefully you're watching this on video. Like, you, you, yeah. you are a charismatic so, guy. Uh, I said Barnard Medical Center, and he's got this embroidered <laughs> on his sweatshirt, and he just holds it up yep. to the camera. Yep. Mean mugging. I yep. like that. Thank you. Thank Doctor you. with personality. That's right. <laughs> um, but uh, let's, let's get serious here, because there is a serious link between meat and and the risk of developing cancer. And specifically, we're gonna talk about men. Yeah. And I've got some stats here that we've pulled and the link between prostate cancer and colorectal cancer, I mean, it is through the roof. Yeah, the link to meat from each one of those. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it, it's crazy. I mean, you were just doing some math on the on the calculator there and, and, and the numbers are, are just absurd. Um, I mean, we... we we find out that one person dies of, pro of prostate cancer every 20 minutes. One man dies of prostate cancer every 20 minutes. In the U.S. alone. In, in just in the U.S., yeah, not counting the rest of the world. And certainly if it's happening here, it's going on in the rest of the world as well. Um, but that that blows my mind. If there was anything else that somebody was dying of every 20 minutes, we'd say, what, what's going on, you know? Um, and certainly there are other diseases and people are dying of other things. And we're not saying one is more important or less important or whatever than any of the other ones. Um, but since we're talking about this topic, uh, to think that one man is dying every 20 minutes, like, let's do something. Like, come on, guys, let's go. What are we, what are we doing here? Um, it's, it's so true. But yet here we are as men, you know, we beat our chest, you know, yeah. we, we eat meat. Like, that's what we do. We right. kill it and we grill it. Right, you know? exactly. And, and that's yeah. the American mentality. Right. But you see what that leads to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fighting back. I mean, you say we kill it and grill it, <laughs> but it, it's not done yet. It's, it's fighting back. Um, and, you know, funny you should mention the grilling because that's, that's one of the worst ways to cook it, you know? Yeah. Um, that, yeah. I mean, so I'm doing research for the segment and I was like, well, does it really matter how the meat is prepared? And yes, it absolutely does. Yeah. And and to phrase it carefully, there are more or less bad ways to cook it. Um, there's no real safe way to cook it. So you don't ever eliminate the cancer risk from it for a variety of reasons. But one of the worst ways and actually probably the worst way to cook it is actually grilling it. Um, when you grill it, you're exposing it to an open flame. So what I want you to do is think about, think back to high school class. I think most people have taken chemistry in high school. Um, when you did experiments, you didn't just throw things into the fire, right? You had, you, uh, you most, heated. Most, most did Maybe you did. I don't know. Maybe you did. But so most things you put in the little beaker and you mix it around and you measure the temperature and you heat it slowly and then you mix it with something else. Now imagine if you took all those chemicals and you literally just threw them in a fire. What would happen? Like, what, what would you get out of it? Kaboom. The, yeah. And the, the answer is, I don't know what I would get out of it. You know, you're, you're just, it's a totally uncontrolled uh, chemistry experiment yeah. where anything can form. And we see a similar thing actually with smoking. Um, the comparison is really just the process. So I'm comparing grilling meat to smoking, just that they're both exposing um, chemicals or uh, we can call it food because tobacco, you technically can eat it. You'll die quickly if you eat it, but right. um, you're exposing tobacco or exposing meat to fire. Um, and that quick reaction with the fire creates a lot of chemicals that you may not necessarily want in your body. Maybe even some chemicals we're not even aware of yet. Uh, last I heard, there were something like over 400 different chemicals created when you smoke. Uh, so obviously not a good thing. Right. Um, and with grilling meat, you're creating these heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which roll off the tongue. Right? Of course it does. Um, and those chemicals have definitely been linked to cancer. Uh, like, no question about it. If you consume those things, these chemicals have the ability to change your cells in such a way that the cell growth can become totally uncontrolled and can eventually lead to cancer. But that's not <clears throat> to say then that, uh, you know, broiling a meat or baking a meat is necessarily healthy either. It's maybe just the lesser of two evils. Yeah, I mean, it would be maybe less bad. And the reason for that is there's other things in the meat that can also lead to cancer. 
Uh, <clears throat> you made an interesting point to me before we started rolling is that, you know, if a patient comes to you, it's like, well, you know, if I, uh, if I don't grill it and I broil it instead, that, that lowers the risk. But you kind of view that, you know, as like, why even take it? Right, right. So I think in the medical field, we tend to be very risk averse. I mean, think of all the, the testing we order before somebody goes for surgery, right? In all likelihood, people are probably going to be fine during surgery. But if there's anything going on that we don't know about, that could affect the surgery. It could affect the patient's health. And so we want to know about it. And that's why we order a whole battery of tests. We send people for CAT scans and x-rays and stress tests and all those kinds of things before surgery. So the, the point is you want the risk to be as low as possible. And if you're doing anything that increases your risk, that's, that's not good for your health, right? It's not a guarantee. Like you're not saying you're going to eat meat and you're going to die of cancer, but it makes it more likely. So why would you want to make that more likely in your life? You'd want to make it less likely, right? So you yeah. want to take away things that are increasing your risk and you want to add things that decrease your risk. One of the things that really <clears throat> jumped out uh, and kind of brought this to light in mainstream America was this enormous World Health Organization yeah, yeah. Uh, proclamation that came out a couple of years ago. I mean, that was just groundbreaking. I remember I was uh, still working as a news reporter at the time, and I hadn't gone out on the street yet. I, I hadn't had my assignment. I'm sitting at the desk, and that tweet comes out yeah. from the WHO, and it's like, oh, my, what in the heck was that? Yeah, yeah. I, I still remember where I was when that happened. That that blew away a lot of us. We yeah. said, what, the World Health Organization just said that? Like, yeah. the, you know, one of the major, if not the major governing body for health in the whole world uh, said that processed meat is a carcinogen and leads to cancer. Uh, that was that was a major development. Now, you know, that's not just me, some doctor sitting here telling you that. That's the World Health Organization. And it's it's not just, uh, you know, some cancer. I mean, what is it, 30 percent of all cancers in Western countries and up to 20 percent in developing countries linked uh, to dietary factors. I mean, that's that's just staggering. Yeah. And those are uh, possibly, you know, likely preventable deaths. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's all okay. stuck in there. But imagine, you know, think of think of 10 people, you know, you know, anybody can think of 10 people. Right. Sure. Um, now, three of those people may die of a death from cancer that is possibly maybe even likely preventable you mm -hmm. know wouldn't you want to do something if three people you know were going to die of cancer no doubt yeah of course right i think we all would so if it's something really as as simple maybe not easy but as simple as changing your diet you know i would certainly say hey just eat something differently to try to avoid this death and we see i mean this is this is an, uh, a major study throughout the world um, we see that changing diet does make a difference. You know, we've, we've seen studies through the World Health Organization. We've seen studies through the Adventists and all, all kinds of different groups. Yeah, I want to quantify this a little bit more because I'm a numbers guy, and I think that that grabs attention more than anything else. Uh, there was a study that shows meat eaters have approximately three times the risk of developing colon cancer. Yeah. Three times. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, right? It's it's mind blowing. Yeah, because people don't think of it as a dangerous activity. Like you wouldn't think of it the same way you would think of smoking or I don't know, base jumping, right? Right. Um, but the the fact is, we talked before about the heterocyclic amines and the polycyclic uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Um, but where are those coming into contact with your body? You know, you're eating it, so your mouth obviously it goes down your esophagus. It can increase risk of certain cancers of the esophagus, then your stomach and intestines. Um, and where does it? kind of hang out in one spot the longest is in the colon right before you have to go to the toilet and get rid of it right but so it's just kind of hanging out there really and it's in contact with the the cells of the colon so that's where it has the potential to do the the most harm really is because it's just it's just sitting there and there's not a lot of fiber in meat in fact there's zero fiber in meat right so there's not really anything encouraging it to to move along really i mean it will but there's it's not that not that same kind of feeling you get eating a whole meal of beans and lentils, you know? Correct, correct. I wish Elvis knew that. I yeah, mean, right? <laughs> Let's make our time machine. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so before we move on, I mean, I think that the number that would really stand out to a lot of people is also that these large studies that were conducted in England and Germany show that vegans and vegetarians 40% less likely to develop cancer yeah. than carnivores. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for that, right? You know, you think of uh, if you think of your body as a machine, and I like to use the car analogy, as you may have heard me do. Um, you, you, if you have an expensive car, you're going to put the best stuff in it that you can, right? Nobody's going to go out and buy a Ferrari or a Maserati and put cheap 
gas in it and cheap oil and cheap stereo. You're going to put the best stuff you can um, in the car. And so for your body, you only get one, as far as I know, though, I don't know, maybe now they're doing body transplants, but, <laughs> uh, but really most of us just get one shot at it, I think. And so why are you going to put non good stuff in it why are you going to put cheap food in it and food that's not good for you you're going to you should put the best food in it that you can you know i mean they say you are what you eat to some extent if you eat fast food and 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 oily foods and fatty foods and things that are shown to cause cancer that's not going to have a good result for you in the long run but like we see with the vegetarians and the, and the vegans there putting good healthy fruits and vegetables in there in the body is going to lead to more favor favorable results. Final question for yeah. you: If beef is what's for dinner, oh my is that the worst possible thing that's on your plate? It's not. It's, on, it's not on my plate. What? <laughs> you? I'm talking yeah, in the yeah. general sense. Uh, I mean, I could make some jokes about other things that would kill you a lot faster, <laughs> but um, but no, it's not good. And and the the result of eating that builds up over time. So the more you eat the more likely you are to end up with something uh, that, that you don't want. So I would, I'd keep it off the plate. Dr. Niebuhr, breaking it down, meat and cancer. You are, you are just a treasure to talk to, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Likewise. Thank you. Let's Thank do this again sometime. We will. Believe right. me, you're a good talker. Right. You're listening to The Exam Room, brought to you by the Physicians Committee.